Cora Jade is excited to be medically cleared, but before she can get much farther, Dakota Kai interrupts, warns her not to trust Raquel Gonzalez. She will do all, she will take all the glory and make you do all the dirty work. To which Cora Jade replies, quote, Thanks, Mom, but I don't need the advice. Because if I beat you tonight, I'll be on quite the winning streak. And I'll be one step closer to beating Mandy for the title. This Cora Jade thing is just... Is... This is the kind of promo MJF needs to steal from. Oh, God. This is the... And then... Fun of, yes. And then... Listen. Oh, God. Well, I'll get to it when we get to it. Well, Grayson's walking backstage. Everyone rolls their eyes on it. I want nothing to do with him. So, JB and BJ go to the country concert with KC and KC. And they're sitting in the parking lot. They're waiting for the girls to show up. And they're going to take the girls in their truck and go to this country concert, they say. They never say the artist or the venue. But they're sure excited to go to a country concert. But then the girls show up and have a undeniably much cooler truck. One guy, I I can't tell them apart, but one of them is very excited about the new truck. One guy's feelings are hurt because his truck got shown up. So they go to this county fair, to a country concert, and there's line dancing and stuff going on, and all, everyone seems to be having a grand old time. And then Casey and Casey start dancing with each other, and the camera pans from them to JB and BJ, and their jaws drop. I guess we're meant to assume that they were doing lewd dancing, and the men liked it. <laughs> These two dorks. God. This show is just... This is the middle part of the show that's horrible, yeah, by the way. It, if this I... fucking show's killing me. Well, actually, Let's go back to Cora Jade for a minute, all right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with this tomorrow. I'm sure she's she's a wonderful person, and got a big upside. She's still young. But here is the problem with Cora Jade, okay? I don't know. This is very important. I don't know whether she can actually skate or not, okay? I don't know. Maybe she's great. Maybe she is a great skateboarder, okay? But as a fan, all evidence is that she has no idea how to skate. And she's doing a skateboarder gimmick. Apparently so that she'll be cool, okay? Okay. I saw her uh, at the pay-per-view. She tried to skate, and she fell off the skateboard, which resulted in the fans chanting, You can't skate. Then she did a short, like she skated about three feet uh, off down the ramp, and then, you know, put the skateboard on her shoulder and ran into the ring and everything like that. And uh, these things are everything that is wrong with WWE and particularly NXT, Okay. The point of having, like, a, a skateboard gimmick, let's take Darby Allen, okay? If you skate, you see Darby Allen, and listen, wrestling is, is it's bullshit, it's fake, whatever, predetermined. It's actually not very fake when Darby wrestles, but the point no. is, <laughs> it's predetermined. But you know what's real? That this motherfucker can fucking skate! We see him do all sorts of crazy shit on the fucking half pipe or whatever it's called. We see him hanging around with that one bloke. They skate together. We see him doing all this crazy daredevil shit. We know that Darby Allen is the real fucking deal. Right? Right. Okay. If I'm a, a young kid and I skate, how in the fuck am I supposed to get into a, a character who does a skateboarding gimmick but can't skate? And I don't want to get on Cora Jade because Cora Jade is not the problem here. The problem is the whole fucking promotion. Everything about this promotion is so fake. The school teacher ain't a fucking school teacher. The poker player can't fucking play poker. Uh -huh. What other goofy gimmicks do we have? We have the uh, Olympic gymnast who actually isn't an Olympic gymnast, even though she really is. She's a daddy's girl. We got... Uh, what other fucking characters do we have? Wacky hillbilly hicks who like to fight. Well, yeah, yeah, we have the the, the hillbillies. We have Tony the, D'Angelo's a mobster. Yeah, the mobster. You guys really believe that guy? Guy's a mobster? Of course not. He's a guy playing a fucking character. How could you possibly? Like, I understand if you're if you're seventy, or, you know, which is the median age practically sixty two. You grew up watching this shit in the eighties, and you're like, oh, uh, this guy's name is Tugboat. Oh, now I got a mobster here. You think this is all cool? 
But like, if you're a young kid and it's like you're watching this fucking show and it's a bunch of stupid fucking fake characters, no shit, no young people are watching this show. It's stupid. You can't do a skater gimmick if you can't fucking skate. Maybe you could with the dynamic dudes, you know, because no one else did a skateboarder fucking gimmick. But you got Darby fucking Allen does a skateboard gimmick. Now you got somebody who, like I said, maybe she's a great skater. But the problem is I've seen no evidence of that as a fan. Zero. The only evidence I've seen is that she can't skate. So you can't have a fake skateboarder gimmick and think you're going to attract the fucking skating demographic. You're not. And the concert thing right here, bro, listen, I'm not the coolest guy in the world, but let me tell you something. If I went to a concert and me and my buddy went and these these uh, two women went with us and then, you know, everyone's dancing and then they start, you know, making out on the dance floor, I'm not going to fucking do what these two dorks did, right? Correct. In what way is this cool? In what way is a young person going to watch this and go, oh, man, what a cool... Yeah, look at the look on their face when those two women started dancing lewdly. It's stupid. This middle segment of the show did suck. And it's brought up everything about the show that does suck. There's nothing real about this show. There's nothing organic about it. There's no believable characters. There's fucking nobody to relate to. If I were a fucking mobster, Vinny... Am I going to relate to the mobster character? No. I don't think so. I'm going to be like, what the fuck is this shit? Ah. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six scores. This match was, was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, oh, oh. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that. Holy hey. mother of God, look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Housen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh, also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.